What are the top 10 must-have tools for Kubernetes? Let's check it out. This is limited to 10 tools. And that means that I will not tell you all the tools that I'm using, not even those that I'm using every single day, because there's more than 10. That's what makes this video challenging. I had to limit myself to only 10 instead of 20, 30, 40 that I am actually using every single day. So you will not get a list of all the tools that I'm using. You will not get a list of all the tools that I think you should be using. This is the top 10, the 10 that are a must for every single cluster. There are definitely many other good tools you should be using and we can talk about those in some other video. But now we are going to go and see what are the top 10, right? And I'm going to split them into different categories and subcategories. Categories are simple, CLI and in cluster. Some of the tools we used from our terminals and some other tools we use within clusters. With CLI, typically, we need to do different types of operations. To begin with, we need to be able to develop our applications and develop our manifests and try our manifests and so on and so forth. We need to be able to operate our clusters. We need to be able to define and run third-party applications. And we should be able to observe what's going on in our clusters. Within the in-cluster category or the category that defines the tools that are running inside our clusters, we need to make sure that quite a few different things are happening. To begin with, we need to have a mechanism that will synchronize the desired state, what is in Git, with the actual state, what is our Kubernetes clusters. I'm calling synchronize. You might want to call it GitOps. I'm intentionally trying to avoid that term because theoretically you could be using CI-CD pipelines to accomplish not the same, but similar. Anyways, next one would be TLS certificates. We need to make sure as a minimum that all the traffic coming into our clusters is uh, encrypted, that we are using HTTPS with TLS and so on and so forth. So the TLS certificates would be the second one in this category. We need to manage our infrastructure and to manage our applications. We need to collect and observe and alert based on metrics. We need to collect logs and we need to define policies, who can do what. So those are the categories and the subcategories. And within those, I'm going to pick 10 tools, 10 tools that are a must, that everybody should be using one way or another. But before I do that, there are a couple of notes that I must say, that I must uh, stress out. First of all, I'm not only talking about the tools that are useful for you as a Kubernetes expert, but also tools that will enable others to use Kubernetes clusters. So it's not only for you, it's for everybody. Also, I'm excluding things like, hey, how do we create Kubernetes clusters? How we build container images and so on and so forth. I assume that that's a separate subject. Here we are talking only about managing things inside Kubernetes clusters and outside Kubernetes clusters and quite a few other things related to Kubernetes, but not about preparing your applications to running Kubernetes and creating and managing Kubernetes clusters. And the last note is that all the commands that I will be executing today and all the references and all the links and everything you need is in the description of this video. Let's get going and the first one we are going to talk about is local development and which tool we should use for that. When local development is concerned, my absolute favorite is Rancher Desktop. It is lightweight because it is based on K3S and so on and so forth. It is awesome. You should run Rancher Desktop because it is by far the best way to run local Kubernetes clusters. And I have a video about that, so go and check it out. The link to the video is in the description. Next, let's talk about operations. How do we operate Kubernetes clusters? You will have to, you almost certainly already do use kubectl. You cannot work with Kubernetes without kubectl. And we use it all the time. Absolutely everything you do with Kubernetes, one way or another, is done with kubectl. We can do things like kubectl, get namespaces, and then we get all the namespaces we have in our cluster. What is a bit less known is that kubectl can be extended with plugins. And two must-have plugins are CTX and NS. With CTX, we can easily change the context 
from one cluster to another because let's face it you're most likely going to have more than one cluster and since kubernetes is split into namespaces by default we are always using the default namespace and if you want to change from one namespace to another and avoid typing dash dash namespace etc etc or dash n etc etc we can execute kubectl ns and switch from one namespace to another. Now let's go into third-party applications. How do we manage third-party applications? To manage third-party applications, and you will almost certainly have third-party applications, you know, those are the applications that were not developed by you, like Mongo Database, Prometheus, Loki, or most of the tools that we are going to explore later, you need a way how to deploy those applications and you need to way how to customize those applications. And for that, you will have to use Helm. Helm is a templating engine that allows us to convert our manifests into templates and so on and so forth. I do not like using Helm myself. I do not use it for my own applications, but when third party applications come into play and they do all the time, Helm is indispensable for a simple reason, because almost every single third party app is deployable through Helm. You might be lucky and find a way how to run third party applications without Helm by using pure Kubernetes YAML or Customize or JSONnet and so on and so forth. But Helm is the golden standard and you will have to use it. And it's relatively straightforward. You just figure out where the application is. You find out all the arguments and the definitions of that application. And you say, hey, I want to use Helm to install or upgrade something. That something in this case is called crossplane. This is the location of the chart. This is the namespace. And you can specify a few arguments. You can specify the values file with all the parameters. You hit go and the application is up and running. Now let's jump into observability. How do we observe what is going on in our clusters. For observing what's going on, what's happening in our Kubernetes clusters, typically we have one dashboard or another. You might be using Lens, you might be using Octeto. There are many, 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 many solutions, but I do not use any of those. I use K9S. And the reason is relatively simple. Most of the things we do with Kubernetes, we do from a command line. And then it's very useful to have a dashboard in command line, in terminal, instead of switching to some desktop app or a web browser or something like that. So K9S is absolutely amazing. It gives you more or less everything you would get from Lens or any other tool, except that it is running in terminal. It is very fast and you can navigate through it with your keyboard, right? It reminds me on, what does it remind me of? Yeah, Vim, Vim. If you're using VI or Vim, then you will be very familiar with K9S. If you're not, then it's still okay. You can easily learn the shortcuts and then you will be lightning fast. You will be able to see everything, whatever is going on in your clusters like this. Now let's talk about synchronization. How do we synchronize our desires, what is in Git repositories and our clusters? Traditionally, when we would like something to happen somewhere or some state to change somewhere, we would use CI-CD pipelines like Jenkins or Circle CI or whatever you're using, GitHub Actions, or we would be doing manually from a terminal or from some UI. But today that sounds silly. If we want to synchronize our desires with the reality, with what is going on in our clusters and outside of our clusters, we would use GitOps and within GitOps area, it's either Argo CD or Flux. Both of them are great. I tend to use Argo CD slightly more than Flux, but you cannot go wrong with either of the two. And once you install one of those, you will have a process in one of your clusters running and continuously monitoring your Git repositories. And whenever you make a change over there, those processes will make sure that those changes, that change is synchronized with the cluster and your cluster, your system, everything will be always up to date. It doesn't have to be only Kubernetes. It can apply to anything. GitOps is absolutely awesome and you should choose either Argo CD or Flux. Now let's talk about certifications, TLS and HTTPS and how do we do that today? Certificates were 
painful in the past. They, they were horrible because typically an organization would have their own cert managers and they would uh, manage certificates and they would distribute it to everybody and it was nightmare and it required a lot of Jira tickets, a lot of wait time, a lot of downtime. Horrible. Today all that is automated, all that is just happening and the best way to do it, the best way to ensure that all the incoming traffic has TLS certificates is Let's Encrypt. And within Kubernetes there is a project called Cert Manager that enables us to use Let's Encrypt and other Cert Managers. It doesn't have to be Let's Encrypt. Let's, let's start with that there, right? But Cert Manager is making sure that our certificates are always created, that they're always up to date, that they never expire and all those things. So if you need certificates and you do, use Cert Manager. Next, let's talk about infrastructure. How do we manage infrastructure within the context of Kubernetes? Remember, I'm focused on Kubernetes only. You might be having better or worse tools outside of Kubernetes, but I care about Kubernetes in this video only. So let's talk about infrastructure. Now, if we want to manage infrastructure, and we have to manage infrastructure because it's not only Kubernetes. To begin with, Kubernetes is also infrastructure, but there are many other moving pieces about networking databases. For example, you might have to run a database outside of your Kubernetes cluster or something else. And how do we do that within Kubernetes? Well, there are quite a few tools today that enable us to define infrastructure as Kubernetes manifests. The leader over there is Crossplane. It's not the only one, but Crossplane is the one that I like the most. And I happen to work in a company behind Crossplane because I like it so much. So if you need to manage infrastructure and you want to do it Kubernetes way, use Crossplane. It's awesome. We also need to figure out how to manage our own applications or to be more precise, how to define our applications in Kubernetes clusters. Now, if you're already familiar with Kubernetes, you might be thinking, hey, I should define my applications as Helm charts or cross-plane something or directly as Kubernetes manifests, but those are not applications. They are infrastructure pieces. They are building blocks. What we really, really, really need is to wrap all those into something that resembles application. And the two tools that I believe we should be using for that are either Crossplane or Kubevela, which is behind Open Application Model. I will be using Crossplane simply because I'm limited to 10 tools and then I already used Crossplane in the past when I said infrastructure, so you can use Crossplane for that. Or you can use Kubevela, but hey, limitation is 10 tools, so I'm sticking with Crossplane over here. And what Crossplane enables us to do is to define new resource definitions that will define what an application is in our context. And then instead of everybody working with services and deployments and stateful sets and virtual services and ingresses and so on and so forth, we have completely new definitions that define what an application is within the context of our organization within the context of our company. Next, we need to talk about metrics. We cannot be blind and not know what's going on. And knowing what's going on, it's not only listing pods and deployments in our clusters, but also seeing the statistics, seeing what's really going on. So let's talk about metrics and observability within the context of metrics. Now, the absolute ruler, not necessarily the best choice, but the de facto standard in Kubernetes world for collecting metrics is Prometheus and the de facto standard for observing metrics, you know, dashboards type of stuff is Grafana. Both of them are absolutely awesome and those are the tools you should be using. There are others, especially SaaS services, but if you have to pick one and you want it to be free, that's Prometheus with Grafana. It gives you a way to collect metrics in a central location, it gives you a way to create alerts with Alert Manager, which is part of Prometheus. And Grafana allows you to create dashboards and observe what's going on so that you can look at metrics instead of watching Netflix. But metrics alone are not enough. We need to collect logs from all the servers, from all the applications, from everywhere and store them somewhere so that we have a single place where we can see what's going on with metrics. When it comes to logging, it's very clear that when working with distributed systems, we need a way to collect all the logs from STD out, typically happening everywhere in our system and ship them somewhere. And we can do that shipping with Promptail and we can have that somewhere be Loki. I love Loki. I think it's very lightweight. It's like Prometheus, but for logs 
it's not necessarily the only choice but if you have to choose one and that one will be managed by you and not the service by somebody else then Loki is the best choice today at least when logs are concerned and the easiest way to ship all those logs to Loki which is a database of sorts is to use Promptail. And finally we have policies so let's talk about policies how should we set policies in our clusters. It's almost never one person, it's almost never only you. There are many different people and teams and uh, entities that are doing something with our Kubernetes clusters and we need to make sure that whatever is done is done correctly. And if it's not done correctly, then that something should be stopped. We should get a warning or we should not be even be able to do things we shouldn't be doing. And the best way to do it is through admission controllers, which are baked into Kubernetes. We just need a tool that will leverage those admission controllers and the best two we have in Kubernetes today are Kyverno or OPA Gatekeeper. I tend to use Kyverno a bit more than the other but both are absolutely great. One is easier, one is more Kubernetes native which is Kyverno, the other one is potentially more powerful but also more complicated and it's not necessarily designed to work in Kubernetes which is OPA but Gatekeeper makes it Kubernetes-like so you should use one of those two. You have to have policies. You just need to figure out which of the two you want to use. So those are my top 10 tools. I'm missing a lot of them. I'm using also Service Mesh, for example, which is not in this list because I limited my reach to only 10 tools. And I thought that those that I listed so far are the ones that I use most of the time and they're more or less indispensable, right? Many of the other tools that I do use are still somehow optional and depend from case to case. So within the CLI category or user experience type of category, you know what we do from our laptops. We need a way to develop uh, our applications and deploy them into Kubernetes clusters. And for that, I'm using Rancher Desktop. We need a way to operate our Kubernetes clusters and that's kubectl with plugins, especially kubectx and kubeNS. Absolutely amazing plugins, you have to have them. Management and definition of third-party applications goes through Helm and they observe what's going on in my clusters through dashboards and for that I use K9S. When things running in our clusters are concerned, I need a way to synchronize my desired state with the actual state and for that I tend to use Argo CD, even though Flux is also amazing. I need TLS certificates and Cert Manager is definitely the best choice for that. I need to manage infrastructure and I need to manage my applications. I need to define what infrastructure and applications are and I use Crossplane for that. Then we have metrics which I observe through Prometheus and Grafana. I count those two as a single tool. I need to collect and ship and observe logs and for that I'm using Loki with Promptail. Again counting those two as one. And finally for policies I personally prefer Kyverno even though Gatekeeper and OPA are excellent choice and very powerful choice but I'm still leaning towards Kyverno. I already explored some of those in my previous videos. You will find the links to all those in the description. Some of those I did not explore previously and if you would like me to talk about any of the tools that I mentioned today and I did not talk about in the past, just let me know and I will create a video for you. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Hey, actually, no, 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 no. wait, 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 don't go. You need to click the like button and you need to subscribe to this channel. And also you should consider sponsoring the channel. It's the price of the coffee and it means a lot. It keeps the expenses under the bearable minimum. So join the channel if you can, subscribe and like. I know that you can do that. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.